Hi there, welcome. And this is Robert Bruton. I am an author, and uh, I wrote a book uh, called Guide to Real Change. And I wanted to just kind of talk about a little bit today, uh, if you've bought that book or if you were thinking about buying that book, I wanted to really just kind of touch on a couple things that uh, uh, I think will help and uh, uh, maybe uh, make the book have a little more value to you. Um, you know, when you're a guide to real change, okay, you have to learn to develop, not only develop patience, but you also have to learn to develop perseverance. And you also have to just keep going. You know, what happens is, is people get stuck in a rut and they, oh, this is too hard. I'm just going to quit. And they quit way before uh, they ever should. Or even, you know, I mean, just don't even put quitting as part of the uh, process. You just you know, it's like in my book, Plan B, Hell No. There, there is just no other way that this is not going to work. You know, and you keep going. There, you know, uh, you know, you write books and you hope that they do really well. But you know, if it doesn't make the New York Times bestseller list, you know, do you, does that mean you stop writing? If you don't win a Pulitzer Prize, does that mean you stop writing? If you don't get all the accolades, or if it doesn't sell well, does that mean you stop writing? No. It just means you keep going. You're developing your craft. You're developing your art. You're making headway every time you publish new work. And so this w uh, really resonated with me when I was writing it because uh, you get to a point where you just you stop. And you're like, oh, this ain't going to work. It's too hard. You know, nothing seems to be going right. And what that is is a lack of knowledge. It's real simple to, to fix that problem. Um, so you it may have to go back to the drawing board a little bit. You may have to research some more. You may have to ask more questions. You may have to reach out to people that uh, maybe might have the answer. You know, you'd be surprised when you reach out to folks. Uh, I, re I uh, the other day, uh, reached out to a writer and, and was really just to, to thank him for something that he posted. And he's a very accomplished television writer. Uh, thank him for something he posted because I had all these aha moments. I was like, oh my God, that, you know, it was a lot about story structure and things like that. That was, it, it, it just made sense to me. Therefore it helped me a lot. So I, uh, uh, reached out to him and, and then he started kind of sending me back little ditties. Hey, this helped me, this helped me, this helped me. And you'd be surprised at how nice people can be, um, when you just, are nice to them, you know, and uh, so these are all things that before you quit or before you say, I can't do this, start asking some questions. I mean, I did this thing. This was something I did not because I was I was frustrated. It was something that I read that just was like, oh, my God, cool. This is just, the, you know, going to help me uh, 10 ways from Sunday. And I was like, yeah, heck, yeah. So I was just like, dude, this man, this whole little thing that you wrote it, it just rocks and and I actually ended up printing it out and and I keep it next to me uh when I'm writing and it really 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 makes a difference for me so I'm it again you never know when help is going to come in whatever form that takes you just don't know when it's going to come and what was really cool is this was something I was just thanking somebody and then all of a sudden wow he just loaded me up with some really cool stuff told me about a new project that he's working on um and was I, I was telling him I said man one of your tv shows I just absolutely love it and uh, my family loves it and I said this it's and he said well if you like that one he said wait till you see this next one I've got he said I'm way more excited about the new show than I am even that old one and he said that old one is is a seminal work for him it's something that that really put him on the on the map so um you just never know and so when you're trying to do things for you know to to gain real real uh connection to what you're doing you're going to have to educate yourself as much as you can and that can come in a form just like what I was talking about or you may have to get uh back onto the onto the internet you may have to attend a class you may have to do some things that get you some additional knowledge that helps you uh achieve the change that you're trying to achieve no matter what you're trying to do how many people 
set well like a weight loss thing good lord i i i need to uh i've gained a lot of weight in the last uh couple of years and, and most of that has been uh stress related and uh uh so now that i'm not stressing out uh you know i'm starting to focus a little bit more on my health because uh, uh you know i can tell you just based on some things that have happened in my own life with some uh family in my life is you know it, when you have your health you have everything um you know my uh, uh well, i don't want to even want to I, I, I don't really share that kind of personal stuff on the internet that's just not i don't think it's appropriate um but needless to say someone very close to me is very very sick and and probably not going to live much beyond a year um i'm not i'm going to uh, subscribe to the fact that I believe that through prayer and uh, uh, and some hope that you know that maybe the good Lord will will keep them around for a little bit longer you know um, so enough with that the uh, the the thing is is that that you can't peter out and so like what I was getting back to and going back to the when you when we set a New Year's resolution and, and weight loss is usually one of those things where your diet just kind of peters out, um, you know, a few months in, you're not losing the right amount of weight. You're not. It's hard. You can't fit it into your uh, your schedule or your work life, you know, or your or your or just your life. And so here's the, the thing that that I really focus on in all my books and everything that I write is you know, without some organization, without some knowledge, um, you're just going to peter out all the time. You have to see things through, and it's going to take some real um, planning, you know. When they talk about, I, I, I use the meal prep thing. I said, you know, if you're going to set out for a week's worth of stuff, you, in your wanting to eat healthy, you meal prep. You know, maybe you take a Sunday and you meal prep. And so it's... Uh, one of those things where you you're going uh changes just like that it's just like a meal prep you have to plan out your week so that you do eat the healthy food that you put in front of yourself and that's and that's easy easily comprehended okay um so you know one of the things that that has really really made a life-changing uh paradigm shift for me was meditation and i'm not talking about going Whoa, you know if you get into that hey knock yourself out but here is i'm going to really get into exactly what i'm talking about I've, i write it out but i'm going to tell you in the in the video okay so what you do is you get your phone all right and uh there's glitzy as all of you know uh who uh oops it's funny um that dog drives me insane. But one of the things that I do, uh, in a good way, by the way, um, one of the things that I do is is you get you get you get your headphones, okay, um, and you take your phone, go to YouTube or or Amazon Music or Spotify or whoever you use, okay, and pick you out some music, okay, pick out some stuff that doesn't have a commercial break, uh, things that you know resonate with you. If it's ocean sounds. If it's uh, uh, music, flutes, pipes, guitar, piano, whatever it is where you feel like you can focus on that music. Because what, here's what I do is when your head's going, you're going a thousand miles an hour and you're trying to quiet your mind. And this is incredibly powerful. I mean, if there was a, there's some secret sauce ingredients that I put into all my stuff and this is a big secret sauce okay it's a big ingredient to make my secret sauce for success is meditation you um again you find this music and what you want to do is you want to be able to sit down somewhere comfortable okay um if it's stretching out your legs sitting on the floor uh you know you want to sit somewhat up you know because you don't want to be in a situation where um you fall asleep because <laughs> you can put yourself you can just flat put yourself to sleep doing this all right so you put on your headphones and the reason being is you want to drown out all ambient noise um 
Uh, noise canceling headphones help a lot. I just got these. My uh, this was a gift from my mom. My uh, other uh, AirPods that I bought in Dallas uh, uh, gave, finally gave up on me. They they stopped holding a charge, and and they were. They, I thought those were amazing, but this wow. Um, these are noise canceling, and seriously, when you put put them in your ear, it's hard to hear anything. It's pretty cool. And the reason, again, what you're trying to do is drown out any distraction. All right, so there can't be a distraction in what you are doing because if there is, what stinks with all that is is that you're going to lose your concentration. So once you get the headphones in, once you find a, a spot and you've turned off your, uh, put your phone on silence and, and do not disturb. If you put it on do not disturb, that way it cuts off all of your uh alerts that way if somebody sent you a facebook message or somebody sent you a twitter message or uh, you know you got a text or something like that it all comes into your phone but it holds it until you turn it until you turn the do not disturb back on or off rather i should say so you don't want any you want to you want to put the dogs away you want to put the cat away you want to tell the kids um you know stay Stay in your room, go do whatever. Tell your spouse, hey, can you watch the kids for a little bit? I'm going to sit down. I'm just going to quiet my mind for a minute. And then when I come back, I'm going to bring a brand new me to you. Who wouldn't do that for you? So um, you, you sit down, you relax, you get things going, and you simply start to breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Just nice, slow, cleansing breaths. <sighs> Doesn't have to be anything fancy doesn't have again i'm all about being simple okay that's why you'll never see me uh you know today i'm wearing a uh, my hat and i've got on a t-shirt and it, you just keep it simple keep life simple there's a time to dress up sure there's a time that i'm going to put on a suit and a shirt and tie and there's a time that where in this moments i just want to be relaxed i want us to talk and i feel like that if I come here all dolled up and things like that, that it just doesn't really uh, lend itself to us just having a conversation. So you begin your breathing exercise and you begin, you close your eyes and you just breathe and you just kind of focus on whatever music, if it's ocean sounds, bird sounds, if it's uh, flutes, pipes, whatever. Okay, you're just focusing on the music because what we're trying to do is to get our mind focused on one thing instead of a hundred things that are going on in our head. How am I going to pay these bills? The kids are going crazy. My teenager's on drugs. My teenager got busted uh, drunk driving. My uh, husband got busted drunk driving. You know, there may be some real big chaotic thing that honestly, if you have a clear head and you have a moment where you can find some clarity, I'm telling you, you will find answers to everything that's going on in your life and 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 though because now your your head is open to receive things from from your subconscious mind and you're able to sit there and basically you know I sometimes I just ask God show me you know what I need to do help me in my heart feel what I need to do you know and uh, so you're able to just quiet your mind rest settle down and you're able to do this for extended periods, and then all of a sudden your body's relaxed. Your shoulders are relaxed. The tension in your neck is relaxed. And then you're going, okay, cool, now. you know. And you kind of start thinking about, well, how am I going to fix this? How am I going to, to do these things? But if you continually meditate, and if you continually do what is necessary to steal your mind, I'm telling you, this has unbelievable impact in your life absolutely unbelievable you will you'll be sending me emails going dude this works this is good because still all we're doing is trying to still our mind and then as we get to where we're doing that then all of a sudden you can also begin to visualize what it is that you're uh, if you want to be happy see yourself in a relationship um if you want to see yourself in, you know, in the C-suite, you know, in the corner office, see yourself looking out that window, you know, see people around you as a leader following you because you're a cool dude. They're like, man, I would follow you to, you know, the, 
the depths of hell, you know, and uh, uh, because they believe in you. They believe in what you uh, offer. They believe in, you know, th- what you give. And so you can see and feel those things in your meditation practice, and it will make, I'm telling you, an unbelievable difference in your life. The other things that you want to do to create lasting changes, you need to learn how to, uh, the difference between activity and productivity, and you hear me talk about this all the time. There are certain things within my books and certain things within my podcast and certain things within my blog that I absolutely hit on all the time because if you learn these things, I'm telling you, they are life-changing, and that is the difference between activity and productivity. Activity is going to be Texting friends, playing on social media, texting your spouse, which is fine. I get it. Sometimes you just want to go, hey, babe, I love you, and text it to them. I love you too, honey. Thanks for thinking of me. You know, those are okay, but there is time throughout your day when you need to 110% focus on the task at hand. When you can learn to do that, holy moly, I'm telling you, when you can... When you can say, okay, from this time to this time, I'm doing nothing but this. You will get more done than you ever imagined that you possibly could. The other thing that's really cool with that is that, you know, the multitasking, get that shit completely out of your head. You know, here's the thing. I can't write four books at the same time. I can't have four screens up and move from one to the next and write four different books. It's just not ever going to happen. Okay, Um, so what makes you think that you can be juggling one thing, juggling another? And here's what I hear people saying. Oh, but, you know, I've got kids. I've got a family. I've got the. Okay, cool. Yeah, we all do. We we all got that stuff. You know, Um, uh, you know, I hear Steve Harvey in in one of the videos that he does called Jump. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he says, you know, one of the things that when he finishes that talk he said some of you are going to get out in the car and go you know well, I can't do that I got bills and he said they're going hell we all got bills if if you miss a paycheck uh you, you know you ain't gonna have no credit no way so you might as well go out fighting you know it's it's I butchered that a little bit but it's it's you'll get the gist of it and if you've never watched on YouTube Steve Harvey jump go watch it it, in fact, I'll put a description of it in the uh, in the link below. It's it's that that if you want to think about something in your life that, that you know at some t- point in time in your life you got to jump, okay, and uh, and that's the whole point of change is you have to jump, you have to go do it because until you do it, there's not really nothing that's going to happen. You know, it's just like. Uh, I can sit here and talk about, you know, ah, I gained some weight, I need to I need to do it, but unless I get off my ass and go outside and walk around a little bit, go walk the dog, um, do something that creates some exercise in my life and gets my heart moving a little bit, then I'm just going to stay status quo. And that's, uh, it's never going to change. So I actually, so one of the things that you're going to have to do is take that first step, okay, and then you have to stay consistent with it. You have to set up a reminder. That's when we talk about organize um, your life is organize it down to the last damn detail. And I'm telling you, if you do this, it works. It's a pain in the ass to start. Yes, it sucks because you're going, oh, my God, this is so much shit. I can't, you know, I'm telling you, once you get it set up, once you get those recurring events set up and 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 you have see there, my phone just rang. I didn't. I didn't silence my phone like it normally I should, but I'm going to, and I'm actually going to answer this because it's important. Um, all right. But it's not more important than what I'm doing right now. So I silenced my phone. I did answer because I am waiting for someone, but they're still about four hours away. So um, I wanted to acknowledge that. And anyway... You have to, if you organize your life down to the, I mean, to the finite detail of everything that you do every day, you can set up, if you were going to exercise, well, you can pretty much say you're going to exercise within 
the same time pretty much. So if you're a morning person and you get up at 4 o'clock and you're going to, from like 4.30 to, say, 5.30, you're going to exercise. You know, you're going to go for a run. You're going to go for a walk. You're going to go into your home gym or your home treadmill or whatever. Or you're going to drive down the street to your gym and, and do your thing. You are pretty much need to set that as a routine. So you can set that. And, and here's the thing. Set it up as a recurring event in your tasks or your calendar. And the reason being is set it with some, and always try to put some obnoxious reminder, a fog horn, some, <laughs> some crazy thing that blows that tells me that I need to be doing the next thing. Because how many times in a day, here's, the, here's, here's where I'll get you. How many times have you woken up and go, oh, shit, I was supposed to go do this. Oh, man, God dang it. And it's something you do all the time. You know? How many times have you gone, looked up and gone, oh shit, I gotta go pick up the kids. <laughs> you know? They're pretty important in your life. But come on, parents, let's be honest with each other. How many times have you looked at your watch and gone, oh crap, oh shit, the kids are, I gotta go get the kids. Yeah, so why don't you set these things as reminders in your phone? We all get absent-minded or we get busy doing something and lose track of time. And time is your friend if you use it properly. So don't for one minute think that putting a time for you to do your exercise, a time for you to meal prep, a time for you to uh, write, a time for you to read, uh, a time for you to just be for you, a time for you to, to be present in the moment with your spouse, be present in the moment with your children, uh, be present in the moment just for yourself. How many times, you know, do you need, you love your family, but sometimes you need to unplug for a minute and recharge your battery, recharge your health, recharge your mind. You know, it doesn't mean you don't love anybody. It just means that you need a minute to fix yourself. And that's okay. That's a good thing. So what I can tell you about Guide to Real Change is I can tell you, you need to organize your life. You need to learn how to quiet your mind. And this is this is to get real change. And you need to do this. Don't listen. I, I, here's the thing. Um, I don't listen to, you know, well, you do this for uh, 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, 90 days. No, I don't listen to none of that shit. It'll become a habit. No, do it for the next year. Set it up. You know, I'm going to work out for the next year. Because think about it. If you work out an hour a day, for every day for the next year, that's 365 hours of, of healthy stuff that you've done for your body. Uh, same thing with reading. If you're going to read a book for an hour a day, then at the end of the year, you're going to have 365 days that you actually, 365 hours of information going into your noodle. How much smarter are you going to be? How much? Uh, how many times are you going to go, oh man, I, I, oh wow, I, I get it now, you know? And... Uh, Here's the thing, too, is I see a lot in, in of people saying, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. Um, education, people say, I don't have an education. Well, this is going to sting a little bit because I'm going to, uh, you know, is here's the scanning. And I heard a smart-ass remark, and I'll share it with you in a minute. But, you know, I, I see people, I can't get an education. I can't go to school. Okay, maybe you can't. Okay, a lot of us couldn't, okay? Uh, a lot of people didn't have uh, access to the money, access to uh, student loans or anything like that that, uh, that would have, uh, in, or you just simply didn't do it, okay? Um, here's the thing, all right? And this is the part that stings a little bit. All right, so the library is full of textbooks that every college and university on the planet uses, Okay. Um, you can go find textbooks on anything that you could possibly imagine. You can also pretty much not only on YouTube find how to change a flat tire, but you could also watch an MIT lecture on uh, theorem, quantum physics, you know, things that I, I've watched it because that just, it's cool because you're sitting there going, listening to some dude that could talk to Stephen Hawking and, and you're, you're going, man, that's, that's just cool. You know, um, 
uh, or watching, you know, when, and what got me into that was watching the movie, A Beautiful Mind, you know, and, uh, seeing what he went through, uh, as, as arguably one of the greatest mathematicians in, in my lifetime and certainly in the uh, history of mathematics, you know. And when you think about all the stuff that, that everything in our life is basically run on an algorithm, um, it's kind of cool to go see what that's about. And uh, so, you know, if you wanted to, you could take a class at that level or certainly watch a lecture at that level. So what's the difference between sitting in the actual classroom, listening to the lecture, or watching it on a video? Absolutely nothing. You're still there. You're still immersed in, in that conversation. Okay, maybe you can't ask a question, but you certainly could Google it or you certainly could go to the library and say, where would I find a book about this? Where would I find information about this? You know, universities have law libraries, they have business libraries, they have libraries. Um, most metro areas have amazing, you know, being from Dallas, the Dallas Public Library is about the coolest place ever. It's an, it's really neat. I mean, it, and it's gigantic, you know. It has books from, from everything, you know, in, in every subject you could ever imagine possible. Here's the kicker. It's how bad do you want to learn? If you want to learn bad enough, you'll go teach yourself. You're, in essence, going to have to do that anyway in a classroom setting. You know, instead of listening to someone and writing on a chalkboard or a whiteboard, you're going to be reading it out of a book. And then usually in those textbooks, there are, you know, practice tests and things like that. Get yourself a workbook. Get yourself a CLEP test. Get an SAT test. You can get all that stuff at, at a half-price uh, bookshop, a used bookshop. If you really want to learn, then go learn. You can. You know, and I'll get to my, my point now. I was watching a, a movie called Lake Placid, and, 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 I, and I, I never I laughed so hard because I love smart-ass humor. And so um, the sheriff and this scientist guy are arguing back and forth, and he's like, the sheriff guy's like f totally frustrated with the uh, with this science guy, and, and he's like, how the hell do you know all these things? How can any human know all these things? And, and he kind of leans in and he goes, they hide all of that in books. You know, and the way he does it, it just is so smart-ass and just so funny, but that's the thing. All the information that you want, you know where it's hidden? It's hidden in books. It's hidden in the internet search. It's hidden in asking questions. You know, again, I go back to, you know, ask someone a question. You know, if there's somebody you see on social, ask them a question. You may or may not get an answer, but you might. You know, who knows? Write a letter to somebody. You know, if I got a letter from somebody, I mean a physical letter from somebody, I would absolutely answer it back, especially if they ask a question. Who the hell sends a, a, a letter today? You know, stationery is a thing of the past. But there's creative ways when you are resourceful that you might get a response. You might have somebody, you might spur them on to give you a response if you do something that's a little interesting in the way that you approach it, you know. Um, I have a quick story on being resourceful. So, when, and this is, good Lord, uh, 25 years ago, okay, um, when I first got in the automotive business, and a guy comes in to the store, we're a Chevrolet dealership, and the guy comes into the store, and he doesn't speak English, he doesn't speak Spanish either, um, so he's, he's talking to us, and I realize, you know, so everybody's kind of getting in, just brushing him off, and so when I, uh, I go over, they go, well, that's you, rookie. And so, you know, and I'm a young kid. And so I go over and I ask the guy, I said, you, you know, kind of no habla, do you speak English? Where are you from? Uh, you from, uh, you know, Europe or, where? oh, yeah, 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 Germany, Germany. So I, I told him, I said, come with me, come with me. So I go into my office and I sit down. 
and I take the, the phone book. This is dating how long ago this is because we actually had phones on our desk. All right, so I, I, fast forwarding, I called Southern Methodist University and I asked the girl that answered the phone, I said, is there like a, a person there either from Germany or that speaks German or teaches German as a language? They go, uh, yeah, we have all the above. I said, well, can I maybe, and I tell the girl what I'm trying to do. I said, there's a guy here from Germany. I, I don't know whether he needs some sort of help or if he's trying to buy something or what. I said, none of us speak. And, and this is back before Google Translate or anything like that. So the girl goes, she kind of laughs and she goes, well, hold on, honey, let me see what I can do. So next thing I know, this lady gets on the phone with a heavy German accent, and I tell her hello. I tell her my situation, and I said, can I put you on speakerphone, and maybe you can, can talk to this gentleman and tell, me, and, and tell me what he needs, and I'll try to help him. And she said, she, I said, it's one of your countrymen, so maybe you can help me out. She said, absolutely, no. Very sweet woman. So we, she uh, uh, puts, I put her on speakerphone, and she talks to, we, we've become friends since then, and it comes to George, and we, uh, uh, she, t she, you know, they, they exchange obvious pleasantries as they're communicating. And uh, so anyway, they, hang on a sec. I'm going to, I got to do something real quick. Hold on. So, all right. Sorry about that, guys. They, my office phones were ringing off the wall and I don't know why. All right, so anyway, so they, like I said, they, were, they exchange these pleasantries, and they're going through this stuff, and so she tells me, she goes, do you have two sports cars on your showroom floor? And I said, yes, ma'am, and this is the first year that Corvette built a ZR1 Corvette. It was, uh, they were amazing, and here's the thing. At the time, they had a window sticker of $63,000. Each of these cars had an addendum on them for double that, and they were they were about a hundred and twenty five thousand a piece, and uh, because of the the rarity and oddity of the car, it made them worth double what uh, the window sticker was, and people would happily pay that. That at the time, people would happily pay that. So, anyway, she tells me she 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 tells me, and I said yes, and so she tells him, and he asks how much they are, and I and I told him they're one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. And uh, she gets back and she goes, Bob, are you there? And I said, yes. And she goes, um, well, he'll take it. And I said, okay, w which one do you like? I said, they're both black, but it, what, do you like the other one? She goes, so she asked him and she goes, she goes, do you have two? And I said, yeah. And she goes, well, he'll take them both. And I went, really? And she goes, yeah. And I said, how's he going to pay for them? And she said, they're going to wire uh, money from... Uh, uh, his bank in Frankfurt, they're going to wire you money. And she said, he'll need your wiring instruct. He'll need, he'll need the, the instructions to have him wired. Well, fast forward a little bit. And, and after he, uh, uh, he did buy the cars, uh, both of them pay and they wired the money, just like they said they were gonna, everything went just like it was gonna. The guy was, he, and he was telling the lady to tell him that, that thank me because I, was the only person who actually uh, wasn't laughing at him and wasn't not trying to help him. And he, and he applauded my creativity in finding some way to get some help so we could help this guy. And so uh, what he had done, okay, so this is kind of a cool story, is he took these two cars he let me drive one to the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport to DFW, and he drove one to DFW, and we had a, a cab pick us up. But what was cool is is, is they put them in containers in a Lufthansa uh, 747 uh, jet, a cargo plane. So they put these cars, each car, in the, in the deal. So he takes them to Frankfurt. And what he does, and it's, it wasn't the safest thing in the world to do, but they cut the tops where they could put convertible tops on them and they could do it in Europe. They wouldn't do it in the U.S. because it changed the integrity of the car. And so uh, uh, they did it. But he had those cars sold for $600,000 for both of them to a Japanese businessman. So he could take them from Dallas, Texas to Frankfurt, Germany, from Frankfurt, Germany to Tokyo, 
and ended up making uh, a couple hundred grand profit after it was all said and done. And so when he gets back from Japan, he comes by the store, uh, takes me out for a unbelievable dinner and uh uh and has someone there that can actually translate so we could all have a good time and uh it was just it was an amazing thing and and later as as he progressed in 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 his business he stayed in touch with me and and we uh i would go over to his he would invite me to cocktail parties to dinner parties and all kinds of cool stuff that he would have all the time because i was just simply nice to him and he was a very, very wealthy man and uh, and just a super, super nice guy. And, and George it went, ended up that uh, uh, I, he taught me a little bit of German. I taught him some English. He took some more English classes, and he actually became very proficient at, at speaking English. And we got along swimmingly. And to this day, I, I hear from him about once a year, uh, you know, just to say hi or say Merry Christmas or something cool like that. Um you know, and the reason that I I share that story is because sometimes you have to think, I, I guess, I, I, for lack of a better term, outside the box. You know, sometimes you have to go an extra mile to get, because that sale obviously changed a lot about uh, the month that I was having and a lot about my commissions. So, you know, it... Uh, uh, you know, sometimes you just have to, to, to take a little extra step and the benefit far outweighed the commission I made because it, I, I made a friend and I made someone who, who included me in their life because I was someone who didn't laugh at them. I was someone who wasn't teasing or someone who wasn't dismissive. I actually stopped because I cared whether he was in some sort of trouble and needed help. Maybe his car had broken down at the end of the street and he was trying to get some help for that. I didn't know. Nobody had any way to know until we actually found out and asked. And it turned out to be a, a wonderful thing for me. So, you know, that's the point of this story. It's not so much as that it's uh, has to do with change, but it does have to do with the fact that you do have to, in order to change, you do have to take big giant drastic steps to get that done okay so you just never know what uh is on the other side of the fence until you get on the other side of the fence and sometimes that takes a little walk or that takes some some something to do but you you have to do it you know so uh, i've always been that way uh as far as finding a way to do something you know and and it paying off in Thing, in ways that I, I wasn't anticipating it paying off in and, and way more than the money it was it was it was I got a friend so um, so your guide to real change that you know is again you want to learn to quiet your mind learn to focus and uh, and learn to persevere and, and keep going you just cannot give up there can't be you know and and, and I wrote a book called Plan B, Hell No. You know, there is no plan B, okay? If you're going to have a plan B, then you're giving yourself a way out. And if you want to argue that point with me, great. Get my book, read it, and then we'll argue. Um, because I think I, I make a good, I think I make a, a, a novel approach to why I say get that shit out of your head. you got to... I'm either I'm either going to be a successful author or I'm not. I, I mean, there's just not any other ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm either going to be a successful online person, and I'm gonna, you know, I, I, you know, I, I'm the first to freely admit, you know, <laughs> yeah, I guess if I was Brad Pitt, I might, I might get a lot of people looking, at, you know, at me and 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 looking at the things, but I, you know, I, I feel like when you're in something like this, it doesn't, you know, it's like I said, you know, I, I, I'm wearing a t-shirt and my favorite hat today, you know, and, uh, uh, and that's the way I do a lot of things. I don't do it overly or, uh, formally. Um, there are times when, yes, that formal stuff is something that I absolutely focus on. 
um, there is a, a time and a place for that, just like there's a time and a place for what we're doing now, which is just trying to chill out, relax, have a conversation, and hopefully you're watching this and going, okay, I, yeah, that, that makes sense, that makes sense. And I'm telling you, you can go to my website. i got all kinds of articles. I'm on Medium. Uh, I have my own website, you know, robertbruton.com, and all that stuff will be down into the into the description. Like I said, I'll put that Steve Harvey video on the in the description uh, below, and uh, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. And uh, uh, and and you know, I'm I'm really trying to build up our vlog. I haven't been doing that as much as I wanted to. Um, we've been focused on some other aspects of of our. Uh, of what I'm doing and uh, uh, I got out some books and and now I'm trying to go back and create some content that I think helps uh, helps you understand why I wrote the book and helps you understand the book a little better and uh, and makes available more information uh, than just what's written there you know I hope you will buy my book and I hope you will look at it and if you have thank you very much I appreciate it and and just know that that there's a lot of content and, and like this stuff right here uh, is free. But I do have some stuff coming up on Patreon that's going to deep dive into some other aspects of the book. And that comes with a little subscription cost. But uh, uh, it is a monthly subscription and you can cancel it any time. But it does have some. Uh, I hope that you'll go, man, if, I, if this dude's stuff is as good here as it is, you know, on the paid site, let's see what he does on the paid site. And because we are coming up with some really cool stuff. And uh, uh, I have a, a, a teacher that's looking at it and guiding us to make sure that we uh, come off with a curriculum and uh, that, that you will learn, that, that does teach. So I'm excited for that. And uh, and all this took me changing. You know, it took me actually changing my life. You know, I went three years ago from a uh, divorce I didn't want and things that, you know, my life kind of caved in and all around me. And I wasn't looking or prepared for it. And uh, uh, it happened. And, and, you know, since then, I'm, you know, I have pulled myself from the darkness and, and have published my books. I've you know, do some online training and do some other things that I'm, I'm happy to do my po I have a successful podcast show and I'm hoping to be more successful here on YouTube as, uh, we develop more content for that. So I hope you'll keep coming back and, and listening. And, and, uh, like I said, I've, I've done nine books now and, uh, we're going to come back and, and really support those books with some, some fun content. So I hope you find this interesting. So Guide to Real Change is the book. Um, it's available on Amazon, and I hope that you'll uh, give it a look. I write a lot of, of ebook-style stuff simply because it gets to the meat and potatoes of what we do, okay? It gets into the meat and potatoes of, of you don't need to hear, well, I was born in Roswell, New Mexico on May 12th, you know, uh, and, you know, from there, my family migrated to here, and we did this, and we did that, and, you know, I don't think you really need my life story. Uh, you're certainly welcome to ask about it, and I'll, I'll share it with you, but, you know, uh, I think a lot of fluff in things and not getting to the meat and potatoes, because I, I know I skip through books, especially nonfiction books where I'm trying, where I buy a book that I really want to know something about the subject, and I have to go three chapters deep to get to the actual three or four chapters deep to get to the actual meat and potatoes of what I'm looking for. And then it may only be a chapter or two. And so all of the chapters in my book all have uh, stuff that you can learn from and stuff that we just get right into. So that's why I hope that uh, uh, you'll buy and, 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 and check it out. Um, for uh, anybody that maybe is struggling, um, if you and I do this on my podcast show, if there is a book that I have that you would like to read, but you maybe are just right now aren't able to afford it, if you will reach out to me, you can go to the website, and I'm going to put a link to my website, and 
uh, go to the contact us page. There's a way to communicate with me and just send me a note and say, Hey dude, I'd really like to read this book. And you know, I'm just having on hard time. And not only will I pray for you to get out of that hard time, but I'll also happily send you a digital PDF of the book. Uh, it won't be that pretty or, you know, uh, won't have the fancy cover and all that, but it'll still be the book and it'll still be something that if it means something to you, I absolutely will send it to you absolutely free of charge. If you want it in a PDF or if you want me to print it out and drop it in the mail to you, just simply put a, a an address and say, hey man, can you print that out and send it to me so I'll have it and, and I will fix you right up. So... Uh, and happy to do so. And that's on anything that, that you find, any of my books on Amazon. If you want one, two, three, just tell me, and I will happily send you, a, like I said, a digital copy. All right, and uh, so what are you going to do to change today? Get off your butt, get out there, and do some of the things that we talked about in this video. Lots more to come. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk again real soon. All right, cool. Bye for now.